How is scientific inquiry carried out in practice? Before a hypothesis is accepted by the scientific community, it goes through a series of steps. This is what we call the scientific method. This method was first devised by Sir Francis Bacon, an English scientist and philosopher. He argued that evidence was needed in order to prove that something was true. For more on the purpose of scientific inquiry, watch this video. So let's see how it all happens. Firstly, a scientist carries out an investigation, then publishes a paper summarizing their findings. These papers are then published in scientific journals, which are like magazines or newspapers. Each journal usually focuses on a particular area of science. Two of the most well-known examples in English are nature and science. Any investigation usually starts with a hypothesis. The variables have to be identified and ways found to control all the variables, except for the variable that is being tested. This goes some way to ensuring that the investigation is not biased. Then the experiment is performed. It may be repeated numerous times in order to increase reliability. When the results of the investigation are written up into a paper to be published, a set format is followed. Scientists must follow the format and rules of the journal where they intend to publish their work, so that other scientists can read and review their paper. The paper is written using the following sections. The title. This should be concise and informative, summarizing the findings of the investigation or describing what it's about. Abstract. This is the second section, but it's usually written last. It's a summary of the whole report, which readers can use to judge whether to read it or not. It contains the aim or objective, a brief description of the method used, the main results, and conclusions. Introduction. This describes what the writer hoped to learn from the research, summarizes the hypothesis, and references any background information or work of other scientists that is relevant. It can also discuss the wider purpose of the research and its potential benefits. Method. This is described in enough detail so someone could repeat the same procedure. The method is always written in the imperative as are any instructions. It's important to allow other scientists to critique the method. For example, is there a better way the investigation could have been carried out? Could a more accurate method have been used? It also allows other scientists to carry out the experiment and compare their results to those in the paper. If they achieve similar results, we say the results are reproducible. Results The results are stated simply in tables or graphs. There is no explanation of the results in this section. Tables must have the units at the top of the columns and may include averages. Graphs must have the axes labelled and include a title, usually underneath. Discussion Now the results are described and explained. The significance of the findings are explored. All of the questions asked in the introduction section should be answered here. The results are also compared to other published literature. Do they agree or disagree with what has already been found out? The importance and significance of results is also discussed and any new questions that have arisen for future research are stated. Reference list. This is essential to include. It's a list of all the other publications the scientist has read or mentioned in their report. It's also sometimes called the bibliography. It allows the scientist to give credit to others, whose work has influenced their own, and also provides background information for the reader. Appendix. An appendix typically includes data and supporting documents used by a writer to develop the written work. This is extra information that did not fit in the report and provides more detail for the reader if needed. If you look at the example here, you might notice that there are no pronouns. 
they do not say we pollinated the flowers. However, these days, many style guides require the use of the active voice, as it's far less wordy and much clearer. When the paper is published, this is then reviewed by other scientists in a process called peer review. This can be an anonymous process. Sometimes other scientists repeat the experiments to ensure the data is reproducible. Sometimes other explanations for findings are suggested. So why do you think scientists want to get their works published in these journals? Well, they do that so that they can share their contributions with others and also to help improve their career and gain more funding for future projects. <laughs>